Signing Kirk Cousins won't kill the Falcons' salary cap, but there will be challenges ahead. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So, guys, if you do not know me, I'm your very humble host, Aaron Freeman, uh, aka Serious Black, aka Mister Drew, aka the Jolly Green Giant, aka Mr. AKA. And of course, been covering the Falcons for far too long, formerly at Falcfans.com RIP. Still going strong on this illustrious podcast. And I appreciate each and every one of you that is an everydayer that makes this podcast your first listen or first watch each and every day. And all you got to do to become an everyday or subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So today's episode, originally I was going to talk about, you know, some of the recent cap cuts. And maybe some guys that would, you know, be potential targets for the Falcons. But, you know, we got to talk about Kirk Cousins and we'll we'll sort of talk about how the Falcons can avoid falling into the trap that is often teams that have Kirk Cousins, which is leading them towards a path towards mediocrity. We'll talk a little bit later about how much luck is involved when it comes to hitting on the quarterback. Right. That's one of the ways that the Falcons can avoid that trap of mediocrity is drafting a quarterback. But how luck is involved and that will allow us to sort of go back down memory lane and and talk about the luck that was involved with the chiefs hitting on Patrick Mahomes. But we'll start things off talking a little bit about, you know, the ways that the Falcons can create salary cap as a way uh, to get into the conversation about whether or not Kirk cousins is going to be too expensive in order to basically derail the Falcons off season and kill their salary cap. As so many people have likened it as, you know, the number one reason to avoid uh, signing Kirk cousins. And, you know, we've talked before about the potential cap cuts that the Falcons may make. Those include Taylor Heineke, where you'll get $7 million in savings, Lorenzo Carter, $3.75 million in savings, and Mike Hughes, a little more than $3 million in savings. So that all together represents about $14 million in savings, which would put the Falcons' uh, effective cap space uh, at around $45 million. And the Falcons, if they wanted to, could save additional money by restructuring contracts like Young Way Koo, freeing up another $2 million. Grady Jarrett, $7.5 million. Jake Matthews, $9.5 million. Chris Lindstrom, $9.1 million. And so all told, you know, if the Falcons really wanted to push their cap space to maximize it this offseason, they could create northward of $70 million in salary cap, which would put them in the top three teams currently in terms of overall cap space. And that's why you constantly hear me say things like the salary cap is a lie, not because the salary cap is fake, but you can manipulate it, you know, like lying, right? Pretty easily to create as much cap space as you often want. And another common refrain, as I mentioned earlier, that a lot of people say is like, oh, Kirk Cousins is going to kill their salary cap. And no, uh, signing Kirk Cousins is going to be a significant obstacle for their salary cap. Don't get me wrong, but it's not going to kill it. Now, I personally think Kirk Cousins contract is not going to be as large as some people are estimating. I know our guy, Brad Spielberg from PFF recently raised his projection from Kirk Cousins, right? A month ago, it was like two years, uh, you know, $60 million. And now it's like two years, $80 million with about 60 million of that guaranteed. Um, now I personally think he's probably going to Kirk Cousins. That is not Brad. Um, Kirk Cousins is going to probably sign for something closer to $35 million a year. So two years, 70, three years, 105, or something like that. And the reason I think that is like you look at recent deals from similar older quarterbacks like Matt Stafford, who signed for $40 million, Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr, who signed for $37.5 million. And I think going back to the conversation that we had with Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings a month ago on this or three weeks ago on this podcast, you know, we talked about how the quote unquote issue uh, involving Kirk coming off that Achilles injury is going to be reflected in the contract. And so I don't think Kirk is going to be able to maximize his market 
based off of that. I think really what this is about is getting multiple years guaranteed, right? Getting two years guaranteed, three years guaranteed, not necessarily maximizing the per year money. Uh, and not to mention, I don't really necessarily think the Falcons have to be too fearful of getting into a bidding war uh, if you know Kirk does wind up becoming available, because I think ultimately Kirk is going to choose between either staying in Minnesota or playing for the Atlanta Falcons. I don't see teams that theoretically who could outbid the Falcons like New England and Las Vegas being realistic options for Kirk Cousins and thus driving up the price. Uh, so we'll see how that all plays out. But in the interest of illustrating how it's going to impact the salary cap, let's look at you know Geno Smith's contract that he signed last year, which was a three-year, $75 million deal. And without getting into too many of the details and simplifying a little bit, Geno's cap hits in year one was $10 million, year two was $31 million, year three was $34 million. Now, let's say Kirk gets three years, 105 million, that's 30 million more. And the way that you can kind of structure that is add 5 million to the year one cap hit, 10 million to the year two cap hit, 15 million to the year three cap hit. And that would give Kirk Cousins cap hits of potentially on a three year, $105 million contract of 50 million in 2024, 40 million in 2025, and 50 million in 2026. Now, fitting, you know, Kirk in the 2024 cap is, is not, a non-issue, but it's, you know, if you're going to have $45 million or more, you know, you're still going to have, you know, if his cap hit is $15 million, you're still going to have over $30 million in cap space to spend elsewhere. So it's not as if, oh no, you know, that's what the Falcons have right now. And, and everybody's sitting here telling you that, oh, they have all the cap space in the world with $30 million in cap space. So I don't think that's going to be a big obstacle for the Falcons to overcome and, and somehow prevent them from improving other aspects of the roster. The real issue with Kirk Cousins' contract is not 2024 cap situation. It's going to be the 2025 and 2026 cap situation because it's going to be harder to fit 40 and $50 million cap hits under your salary cap without having to restructure it, right? And, you know, let's say two thirds of Kirk Cousins' 2025 cap hit next year is base salary. You could restructure that and slash that and save like $12 million in cap space, or you could add void years on the tack it on to the end of it, restructure it and save maybe $20 million in cap space. And, you know, that would be money that you could definitely use to improve other areas of the roster, other issues that spring up in the next year or two, paying, you know, second contracts for Kyle Pitts and, whoever else is due next year. But that does push dead money into the future. And you find yourselves in a similar predicament that the Vikings find themselves now in, where I think they're going to carry like $28 million in dead money if they don't re-sign Kirk Cousins this offseason, right? Due to them restructuring and adding voidable years on the end. So I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it for you guys. In all likelihood, the Falcons in two or three years, if they sign Kirk Cousins, are going to find themselves in a very similar predicament that the Vikings currently find themselves in, or similar to the situation that Washington found themselves six years ago when they kept tagging Kirk Cousins. And it's like, we're not getting better. And thus we need to move on, right? You know, it's that predicament, that sort of trap of mediocrity is you're a competitive team, but you've kind of peaked under Kirk Cousins, and that peak is probably maybe making it to the second round of the playoffs and then getting beat by whoever, right? And you're looking to move on. And despite the very high likelihood of that outcome, I still think it's a worthwhile move for the Falcons to pursue Kirk Cousins. And I'll explain why as we continue today's Locked On Falcons. Now, passion, drive, and patience, it's what brings home the winning trophy, and it also keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, baby. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. And guys, game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, comedy, music, and theater near you. They have killer last minute deals and you can buy tickets in seconds right up to the start of the event. All in prices mean 
you're not going to get hit with hidden fees and you can see the view from your seat before you buy. And don't forget game times guarantee because you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, they'll credit you 110% the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on. That's L O C K E D O N for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So continuing today's locked on Falcons want to plug the locked on sports today, 24 seven streaming channel. That's giving you all the biggest stories across the league and from the national shows and if you're looking for more local flavor check out locked on sports atlanta's 24 7 streaming channel as well right here on youtube so um you know we're, we're talking about avoiding the kirk cousins trap of mediocrity right and that's a real thing right and basically the two ways that you can avoid that is you know winning right and no one's going to care and you know thus you I guess technically you're not mediocre if you're actually winning games and making the playoffs and the other thing is the second thing is you got to develop sort of an off ramp. Now we'll circle back to that. Now, I think part of the reason why there's so much pushback against the idea of signing Kirk Cousins is because I think a large portion of this fan base is still dealing with the trauma of the Super Bowl loss from seven years ago. And they basically approach every move that this team makes that if it isn't centered around winning a Super Bowl and redeeming that loss, then it is a bad move. And I don't think that's a necessarily wrong way or approach of looking at it because the goal is to l win Super Bowls, but I think it's a particularly naive approach to it due to, I think the way that we often, especially when it comes to the quarterback, the people in my industry, like, you know, podcasters, media, et cetera, we often tend to frame it as like Super Bowls solely come down to who is your quarterback, right? You look at this past Super Bowl between the 49ers and Chiefs and the simple explanation for why the Chiefs won the Super Bowl is, well, they got Patrick Mahomes and the, and the 49ers can't win you because they have Brock Purdy, even though, you know, if you look at pretty much any stat or analytics from that game, Mahomes and Purdy were pretty much equal in the game. They kind of canceled each other out. And the thing that really won the Super Bowl for the Chiefs were like all the little details, like injury here, a muffed punt, you know, special teams for six, a block PAT were like the difference in that game more so than the difference of the quarterback, like the, you know, bad luck you know, hurt the 49ers. They had two fumbles in that game. They lost both of those fumbles. The Chiefs fumbled it five times and they only lost the ball one time. If they lose one more fumble, which is basically a literal bounce of the ball, right? You know, like they probably lose that game, but it's just so much easier to just say, hey, it's only because of the quarterback. It's all about the quarterback. And that's why if you don't have a quarterback on that level, you can't win a Super Bowl. And basically, again, that naive perspective is you might as well just be forfeiting the season. You might as well just be wasting everybody's time. And that's a very sort of fan mentality, right? But if you're an actual employee of a team, right, if you're a player, a coach or front office, you can't really think that way. You know, as Herm said it, you play to win the game. Right. Um, and like, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys on this podcast. You know, we're serious black. Right. I'm a very serious person. That's where that uh, AKA comes from. Right. Is like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that. Oh, yeah, you're going to win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. I don't think you will. Right. I'm not even going to promise you that the Falcons are guaranteed to make the playoffs with Kirk Cousins. You know, it's a very real possibility that they continue to be a below 500 team for the next couple of years with Kirk Cousins at the helm. But you've heard me over and over again for like three or four months now talk about that this team's issues aren't just solely about the coach, right, which they change and the quarterback, which they're going to change. Right. Although people like to pretend it's just, you know, those two issues. And once you solve those issues, everything else is going to fall into place. Right. Because to me, the real reason why the Chiefs consistently compete is not just due to Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, although they are a big part of it. Maybe they're 40, 50 percent of it, 51 percent of it. But it's really the Chiefs ability to solve problems. And we've talked about this before on the podcast. You go back a couple of years when they lost that Super Bowl to the Bucs. They had a terrible offensive line. So guess what they did? They invested in an offensive line. They've had one of the best offensive lines of football the last couple of years. They had a bad defense a couple of years ago that cost them playoff games against the Bengals, right? So what have they done? They've invested in a defense and they have one of the best defenses in the NFL the last couple of years, right? What was the Chiefs' big problem this year? They had no weapons, right? So what do you think the Chiefs are going to invest in and, and fix what problem they're going to fix this offseason? So you know how it is. And so 
the key to the Falcons falling into the mediocrity trap that the Vikings have found themselves the last couple of years with Kirk Cousins is that they have to solve their other problems, right? They need to add weapons. They need to stabilize their run game, their offensive line. They need to improve their pass rush. They need to plug holes in their secondary with more playmakers. They need to develop the talent that they've already added the last couple of years under Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot and continue to develop talent that they're going to add in the coming years under Terry Fontenot and Raheem Morris. If they can solve those problems in addition to the quarterback they're going to be just fine and that's how they're going to win games and no one's ultimately going to care if you're winning games that they're paying Kirk Cousins 40 million dollars or whatever it's the same conversation we had years ago about Matt Ryan it's the same you know the juice continues to be worth the squeeze if you're winning but it's not if you're not right it's the you know why am I paying for cable if I don't watch cable sort of thing when you're paying premium for a quarterback but you're not getting plus play from the quarterback and you know, that's one of the consequences of losing, right? Is people are going to lose jobs. We It happened with Matt Ryan, you know, it potentially happened with Arthur Smith. It did happen with Arthur Smith and the potential was there for anybody else on this team and the coaching staff and whatnot. And as they say, winning cures all ills, right? You know, there are little to no consequences to winning or at least negative consequences to winning football games. Now, I can't sit here and promise you guys that the Falcons are going to win. But I think we can continue to hope that they're going to win, just like we've been continuing to hope for the last six or seven years that they haven't been winning, right? So, you know, that's just the gig, right? We just, you know, there's always next year. If they don't win this year, then it's always next year. Like, that's the gig of being a fan. But, you know, I think the way that you, the second way that you develop a path to leading away from mediocrity is you develop that sort of off ramp, right? Which is you need to have a better quarterback option or another quarterback option in two or three years you know, down the road when you sort of hit that ceiling with Kirk Cousins, right? And I've talked many times over this offseason about why I think the Falcons are very likely to add two quarterbacks this offseason, a veteran and a rookie and a draft pick. And the question, of course, is going to be, is that rookie, is that draft pick going to be good? And I'll be honest with you guys, not going to lie to you. The odds are not in their favor, but the odds are never in anybody's favor when it comes to hitting on the quarterback. We talk about it constantly. It's like the odds are against you that you're going to hit on the quarterback. It's the hardest position in the league, possibly on the planet, in all of sports to evaluate and get right. Right? But here's the thing, guys. As they say, you play to win the game. You got to keep swinging if you want to get a hit. And that's all I can ask from the Falcons is to keep swinging, right? And here's the fun little trivia talking about the Chiefs. How many quarterbacks did Andy Reid and the Chiefs draft between when he got there in 2013 and before they drafted Patrick Mahomes in 2017? The answer is two. People forget that the Chiefs took two swings at the quarterback position behind Alex Smith, right? Which is basically what Kirk Cousins is going to be for the Falcons, a short-term Alex Smith for us, just to sort of keep us treading water and being hopefully a playoff team for the next couple of years as we figure out what the long-term answer is at the quarterback position. Those two swings were Aaron Murray in 2014 and Kevin Hogan in 2016. But you don't care that they whiffed on those two draft picks because guess what? On the third swing was Patrick Mahomes and they got a hit and no one cares about it. And so that's all that really matters. And again, not saying the Falcons are going to draft Patrick Mahomes, but if you just hit, if you just keep swinging and eventually you get a hit, no one's going to care, right? And so, you know, that's what's so crazy to me. And like, you know, don't get me started on like how much luck the Chiefs had to have in terms of landing Patrick Mahomes in 2017. Oh, no, no. Let's actually start, but actually finish today's episode by exactly, exactly getting into that uh, as we wrap up today's Locked on Falcons. Now, did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3 
100% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. So before we wrap up today's episode, I want to let you guys know that your first listen tomorrow will feature Daniel Flick of Sports Illustrated coming on here to talk about, you know, whatever's going on with the Falcons. I wonder what we'll be talking about. Hmm, free agency, Kirk Cousins, quarterback, all that stuff. Same things we've been talking about for weeks. Uh, and of course, you know, you guys may remember, you, you guys are probably well aware of Daniel's good writings over at SI.com. And of course, we had Daniel on last year and we talked about how the Falcons needed to do whatever it took to get Jesse Bates. So I'll, I'll be curious to pick uh, Daniel's brain on if there's another uh, free agent, impending free agent that he thinks the Falcons need to do whatever it takes. Maybe it's Kirk Cousins. Maybe it's Justin Fields. Maybe it's Russell Wilson. Who knows? So that is your first listen tomorrow. But, you know, when we talk about, you know, the luck involved at the quarterback position, you know, I think it's worthwhile, right, to talk about this thing and think about this thing. Um, because, like, I sit here today. And we'll get into the luck aspect of it in a second. But I sit here today and I, I think the quarterbacks are going to go one, two, and three in the draft, right? And we all sit here and we acknowledge that the ideal scenario, as we talk about constantly on this podcast for like two, three months now, plan A for the Falcons is to try to trade up and get one of the top three prospects in this draft. But as you guys well know, and as I've discussed, the, I don't think the odds are in their favor for that opportunity to arise, right? And part of that is, you know, We'll get there in a second, but let's rewind the clock back to 2017, where 10 teams had an opportunity to draft Patrick Mahomes at the top of that draft, and they all passed, right? And this is why I say the Chiefs got lucky, because they needed a third of the NFL to say, no, nah, we're good on Patrick Mahomes, for them to have the opportunity to trade up and get Patrick Mahomes, right? Those 10 teams were Cleveland, Chicago, San Francisco, Jacksonville, Tennessee, the Jets, Chargers, Panthers, Bengals, and Bills, right? And only two of the teams of those 10 teams have coaches then that are still employed by the team. That's San Francisco 49ers with Shanahan, the Bills with Sean McDermott. And of course, who which two teams have been most played by the nightmare that is Patrick Mahomes over the last seven years than those two teams, right? The Bills and the 49ers. He's the, been the biggest thorn in their side and for no, no bigger of thorn than in those two team sides in the year since. But basically, you look at those 10 teams and the 10 coaches that were, you know, holding those jobs, Hugh Jackson, John. Fox, Kyle Shanahan, Doug Marone, Mike Malarkey, Todd Bowles, Anthony Lynn, Ron Revere, Marvin Lewis, and Sean McDermott, half of those coaches, five of those guys got fired within three years of passing on Patrick Mahomes. Some of those teams did eventually find their franchise quarterback, right? San Francisco, Brock Purdy, Buffalo, Josh Allen, Jacksonville, Cincinnati, Chargers, right? Chicago still searching. Carolina's hope that they, they got their guy in, in, in Bryce Young. But for a lot of those teams, you know, it's been – three, five, seven years of trying to figure out the quarterback position. Um, and that's why, like, I sit here and I go, like, I think if the top three teams, Chicago, Washington, and New England, do their research, they will look at it and they say, look, we have the rare opportunity to take a swing on the quarterback. And if we don't take this swing, we may live to regret it. So let's take the swing. And so I, I expect them. That's why I sit here and I think, we will see quarterbacks go one, two, and three in this draft. And while those teams will entertain trade offers, I think ultimately they will not, you know, trade back. Right. And so to me, the big question going into the draft is if that is the case. And again, you know, I'm putting on my profit hat, but who knows? If if we do get three quarterbacks in the first three picks, the question is going to be when does the next quarterback go? Presumably QB4. We've been talking for months that that is almost certainly going to be Michigan's J.J. McCarthy, right? And I think there's a good chance that he could go not too long after those top three guys are gone, right? I look at the Giants at six who seemingly desperately want to get off the Daniel Jones ride, you know, or sitting there in a prime position where they can move off of Daniel Jones's contract after this upcoming season. And if you draft J.J. McCarthy at six, you have already made option at the quarterback position, right? We've heard a lot of talk that, especially if Kirk Cousins leaves Minnesota, and again, for those of you that don't know my feelings on it, it's not a done deal. It's not a slam dunk that Kirk Cousins is is, is leaving Minnesota, but I do think it's more likely than not. I think it's 60% chances where I put it in over these next five days before we get to the legal tampering period. Like I think that number starts to creep up for every day that he does not re-up with, but you know, that Sunday night is really the date because that, that you know, deadline spur action. 
um, as I've heard said many times before. But I do wonder, like, does somebody trade up to leapfrog the Giants or does the Giants take pull the trigger on QB4 and JJ McCarthy in the top? And so, you know, I feel like that sets up well for the Falcons because if we get four quarterbacks, two receivers and an offensive tackle, presumably Joe Alt of Notre Dame, that should leave one of those three wide receivers for the Falcons to get at eight. And of course, if you're going in, in on Kirk Cousins, you want to kind of maximize, you know, as a way to win games in the near future so that you're not stuck in the path of mediocrity. The Falcons desperately need weapons. I know a lot of people are like, we don't need weapons. We have Kyle Pitts and Drake London and we have Bijan and we're good to go. And it's like, oh boy, you guys really need to go back and watch the film because they they basically need to add like five receivers this offseason. And if one of those happens to be the eighth overall pick, I'm going to be complaining, especially if it's Malik Neighbors. Don't get me started on my love for Malik Neighbors. But you know, Roma Dunze, I'm a big fan of. Marvin Harrison, I'm also a big fan of as well. So we'll see how it all sets up for the Falcons. But of course, the question is, what if the four quarterbacks don't go in the top seven? What if JJ McCarthy is chilling there at eight, right? And instead of, you know, four quarterbacks, we get three quarterbacks and, and all three receivers are there, uh, you know, are gone as well. What do the Falcons do at eight? Do they look at JJ McCarthy, stare at him and be like, pull the trigger on JJ McCarthy? And I understand there's a lot of folks out there that think that the Falcons should absolutely do that. And basically the argument I just made for the last five minutes is like, sure, do it. Now, I don't think the Falcons are going to do that, right? I'm skeptical. Let's say I'm skeptical at this point, right? Just because typically teams that have a, you know, don't like using premium picks, especially when the goal is to win games, right? And solve some of these other problems, right? Like a pass rusher, pass catcher, whatever, right? When you don't want to use a premium pick on a player that doesn't really have a path to playing for two or three years, right? This is a big reason why the Falcons passed on Justin Fields three years ago, because they thought, or at least I am of the opinion that they thought Matt Ryan was going to play another two or three years at that time. And they were like, well, there's no clear path for Justin Fields to play. Let's get a guy that can actually help us win games right now. And, you know, Contrary to popular opinion, Kyle Pitts was a big reason why the Falcons won a lot of, or won as many games. I, 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 but clearly, they didn't win a lot of games in 2021, 20, but won as many games. I, I told somebody the other day, like, without Kyle Pitts, I think they start the season 0 and 6 that year. That's my personal opinion, instead of starting the season 3 and 3 as they did. So that's my personal opinion, but, you know, argue about it in the comments somewhere. But, you know, that's going to be a big question, right? When do the Falcons take that swing on the quarterback? Is it in round one? Is it in round two? Is it in round three? Right. I think that's the part of the conversation that gets often forgotten because people like to, you know, make these bad faith arguments as if like the only addition, the going back to the earlier point about, oh, Kirk Cousins is going to kill the Falcon salary cap. It's the idea of like, well, if you go out for Kirk Cousins, he's the only move that you're going to make. No, the Falcons are going to add 40 players to their roster this offseason, guys, or 30. Right. Now, a good chunk of those are going to be undrafted free agents. But like sitting here acting like Kirk Cousins is the only piece like we're going to add like this is the sorry for going on this brand. But like, this is the thing I hate when like you present an idea of the Falcons taking a player in the first round and people are like, well, we need this and we need that and we can't take that. And it's like free agency exists and there's like other rounds that there's six other rounds in a draft where you can also draft players and people make these bad faith arguments that, you know, you can only sign one player or add one player to your roster, either via free agency or via the draft. And it's so ridiculous to me that we live in the year of Thomas Morstead 2024 and like people are like, the world works that way. It's so baffling to me, but I'll save that rant for another day. So that to me is going to be the question, right? Do the Falcons pull the trigger on a quarterback? It depends on how they value these quarterbacks. You know, it depends on how the draft goes. You're right. If, if, again, if JJ McCarthy goes in the top seven, they won't really have an opportunity to take him at eight, right? Regardless of whether they believed in him. And also, you know, and then, you know, again, of course the argument will be made, well, they could have traded up. They could have, you know, gone up to to get JJ McCarthy. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, they could have. You're right. But, you know, that would be a question. Do they get a guy in round two? Do they wait till round three? Do they get a guy in round four? We shall see. But, you know, I don't think the Falcons are basically like, we're going to sign Kirk Cousins and then wash our hands of the quarterback position. And we're never going to think about it. We're just going to set it and forget it and never think about the quarterback position ever again for the next seven years. Right? Again, that's what I mean, the bad faith argument. So it's like, they're going to keep taking swings and hopefully they hit on one of these swings. And we're sitting here being like, who cares about Aaron Murray? Who cares about Kevin Holman? We Kevin Hogan. We got our Patrick Mahomes. So hopefully that's the case. And you know, I think ultimately that's the the 
the reasoning behind the Falcons' pursuit of Kirk Cousins, the options aren't great. We live in an imperfect world with imperfect solutions, guys. And I think the Falcons are going to do what they think is their best option this offseason at the quarterback position. That seems to be heading in the Kirk Cousins' direction. But again, Kirk Cousins could stay in Minnesota, and that would probably lead to the Justin Fields direction. And I'm sure there will be plenty of people, at least based off of my comments, you know, the, the, the people will be happy, right? So we'll see how it all goes. Again, in the meantime, find a hobby, read a book, you know, go for a walk. We got a couple of days before, you know, this ball really gets rolling. But uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow to hear Daniel Flicks on the sort of ongoing things. It's all part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.